Welcome, everyone, to another Lessons with Loosmanverg. As always, I'm your host, Izivan Loosmanverg. So, we all like movies, right? How do you watch movies? Probably on TV or at a movie theater. But you probably don't put much thought into what you're actually using to watch the movie, do you? Huh. That's what we'll be talking about today. The many attempts to bring movies into the house and out of the cinema. For the longest time, your only options if you wanted to watch a movie was for it to either be released into theaters or pray that it would be coming onto TV. There was no way to instantly watch whatever you wanted, and you were basically stuck watching whatever the networks or theater felt like showing you. However, in 1972, something came out. Cartravision. This was a special cartridge that you could either use to record things right off your TV, or you could buy tapes that had a movie already on it. This didn't really catch on, though. This system was only available in a specific TV brand, and most people didn't feel like buying a whole new TV just to watch movies, you know? So it didn't really take off. But putting movies onto plastic videotapes, huh, that seemed to catch on. And just a few years later, we got two new players. That's right, we got a competition. In this corner, we have VHS, and in the other, we have Betamax, two tape-based methods of playing and recording media. Let's take a look. Betamax came out first in 1975 and was made by Sony. VHS is short for Video Home System and came out in 1976 in Japan and 77 in America. Both these tapes had similar ways of playing films. You see, they basically have mini film reels inside of them that get projected onto the TV, therefore showing a movie. Unfortunately, they both had the issue of that you had to actively rewind the tape whenever you were done with it. But on the plus side, this meant that the movie would always play back exactly where you left it when you take it out, no matter how much time has passed. So I guess good and bad things. Alright, but enough of that. Who's winning this thing? Well, Betamax had higher quality, but unfortunately for it, VHS had a larger storage capacity, so it could record more stuff onto it. When people found that out, Betamax didn't stand a chance, and it quickly became obsolete as VHS became the home media titan of the 80s and 90s. Betamax still got releases on it for a while for the people who stuck with it, but it eventually got discontinued in 2002, and they stopped making tapes in 2016. So, it really stuck it to the end. Meanwhile, VHS was riding high for a while before... Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves, aren't we? Anyways, companies flocked to VHS and basically all the popular movies got put onto it. Yep, things were going great. But in 1978, there was a little road bump. And that was the invention of Laserdisc, a video format that had these gigantic discs. And I mean it, these things are like the size of a pizza. <sighs> These things made VHS seem lame. They had much higher picture quality, they had infinitely more storage space. They could even include bonus features, including a new concept called Filmmaker's Commentary, where you could have the directors literally talk about the movie while they were watching the movie. Yeah, oh, it was pretty great if you wanted to learn in the filmmaking process. <sighs> yes, sir. Seemed like Laserdisc would be the thing to end VHS. Except it didn't. In fact, it was kind of a horrifying failure. You see, Laserdisc had one teeny little issue. It was really inconvenient. First off, it was really expensive compared to VHS. Secondly, you couldn't even record things on it like you could with VHS. And most importantly, and probably the biggest flaw, for longer movies, it would stop halfway through and you'd have to get up and flip the disc over to keep watching. <sighs> yes, you really had to do this. As you can imagine, people didn't like the fact that, uh, you know, they couldn't watch the movie all in one go and had to actively get up if they wanted to finish it. And Laserdisc ended up becoming a pretty bad failure. Only really talked about when people are like, hey, remember the 80s? Oh yeah, super cool. So yeah, that's Laserdisc's entire role in history. It's just something for Gen Xers to nostalgicize about. Is nostalgicize a word? It should be. Anyways, VHS continued to ride high and nothing could stop it. Wait, what's this? Another disc format? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. What is this? This is DVD. Digital Versatile Disc. A much more compact version of Laserdisc. Oh, please, just because it's smaller doesn't mean it's going to be better. It probably still has convenience issues. Uh, no, 
In fact, in a lot of ways, it's more convenient than VHS. With DVD, you can just watch the movie in one go. You can jump to any scene you want and uh, more. Okay, well, it's probably going to be sky-high expensive again. Oh, not really. Uh, well, not really. Uh, oh, by the way, we still have bonus features. Oh, boy. Yeah, DVD hit the scene in the mid-90s, and once the 2000s hit, boom, VHS was done for. People started swapping out VHS for DVD, and more and more studios stopped putting their movies on VHS, with 2006 basically being the last year any movie was put on VHS. So during the 2000s, DVD took over as the main media release method. Interactive menus. You could watch commentary again. Behind the scenes footage. You could skip to any part in the movie instantly without having to rewind or fast forward. And oh yeah, you didn't have to rewind when the movie was over. Yep, DVDs were the way of the future. Unfortunately, they weren't as durable as VHS. DVDs are easy to scratch, causing glitches in the movie like freezing and skipping. Sure, VHS eventually wore down over time, but it was still watchable. Just had to look past the static -y stuff. But once a DVD starts skipping, it's basically over. Alright, so DVD's riding high. Now what? Well, how about higher quality discs? That's when we got another format war. In this corner, we have HD DVD. And in the other, we have Blu-ray. Both high definition video formats. But unfortunately, Blu-ray uh, won out, as it was just a better system. Anyways, Blu-ray's high-definition DVDs, loaded with a lot more bonuses. Pretty sweet. But unfortunately, in just a few years, all physical media would see a challenge they weren't expecting. Digital distribution. For context, we've talked about the way movies are on home media, but how did you get that home media? Well, you could just buy it at a store, but what if the movie's bad? Or you're not sure if you want to watch it, and then you just own something that you don't like. Well, that's where video rental stores came in. You could just rent the movie there for a far cheaper price and then watch it and see if you actually like it, and then maybe you'll consider actually buying it. As long as you returned it on time. These, uh, stores, uh, were, uh, very uh, aggressive about late fees. Anyway, these stores dominated the entertainment industry even after DVD came out. But then one fateful day, a new website was born. Netflix. A website where you could rent DVDs online and they'd be mailed to your house. And you could return them anytime, and you don't have to suffer late fees. Oh boy, competition. But then in 2007, they launched a new service that would allow you to directly watch movies and TV shows from their website. And just like that, physical media basically died a quick death. Over the next few years, Netflix dominated the home media market. Because after all, now you just had to pay a single subscription to watch all the movies you wanted. <sighs> And soon, everyone else caught on to this, and basically every film studio started making their own streaming service, to the point that now streaming services are the new cable. You, uh, want to watch something from one company, you're gonna have to buy their, uh, subscription service. Oh, wait, what? Not all their movies are there? Uh, ooh, yeah, you see, we had pre-existing contracts beforehand, and some of our movies are still on other streaming services, but not on, on all the same service, so, uh, yeah, good luck figuring out where is what. So, yeah, good luck figuring out where what is. <laughs> So, yeah, look at all these services. Oh, by the way, you own nothing. We can just remove movies at any time and you can't do anything about it. And that, children, is why Grandma Izzy is still buying physical media. Because these things can be removed at any time without warning, making it impossible to watch. <sighs> Remember, buy physical, hate digital.